the snow is good. Oh. All right, today we're finally reviewing the Solomon QST 106. Let's go. Welcome, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name's Elliot and you're watching Rickety Ski Reviews. Today, finally, the long awaited. I have been wanting to review these skis for months and months. Honestly, since I bought them this summer. I'm going to be reviewing the Solomon QST 106. This is as unbiased as it gets. Not only did I not receive these skis from Solomon, but I went out, paid my own money. I bought these, you know, on sale. They're the 2023 graphic, same as the 2024. But I went out of my way because I had demoed the QST 98, really liked it, and based off of that assessment, decided to get the QST 106 as a powder ski. And it was a little bit of a gamble. So I am very happy to have finally skied on these. So first, let's start off with construction. These skis do not have metal in them. They don't have tightenal. For dampening, they use a cork CFX fiber. And then as far as like to kind of get that strong, stable carve, they've got that double sidewall. Quite a bit of camber here, at least for a ski like this, and quite a bit of splay in the tips and a little bit of splay in the tails. Here I've got, look, SPX 12. I love these bindings. Now, the top sheet is pretty unassuming. Here, super plain, kind of that pale gray, but a beautiful bottom of the ski. And here you kind of have that QST logo when you combine them. So, that's enough of construction and what they look like. Let's talk about how they ski. Now first impression, these skis were insanely fun. Oh my God. I'll be honest, and I'm not just saying this because I spent my own money, I do not think I could have picked a better powder ski. In all my years, of all the skis I've ever skied on, this was the best powder ski I've ever put on my feet. I've never had so much fun skiing in my life, and I cannot wait to ski these more this year. But those are just my first impressions. Let's get into the nitty gritty. feels closer to snowboarding than skiing. What an unreal ski. 
this is the closest I've ever felt to snowboarding about. Now first, let's talk about the cons and then we'll talk about the pros. I'm gonna switch it up a little bit this time. First off, the shortcomings of this ski. Solomon advertises it as a daily driver and that is totally not accurate. <laughs> I would not want this as a daily driver. I'm out west, certainly wouldn't want it still. I wouldn't want to just ski on this every day because it just, it's so wide and it's really fine for curving, but there are much better skis out there. It's not because it's like a bad ski. I just think that it took a lot of energy to ski them and you're not getting the full experience if you're just skiing them daily. I bet that you would get really sick of these. Just in that, it's a lot of width. It's a lot on your hips, it's a lot on your knees. Don't get a 106 as a daily driver unless you're somewhere like Snowbird or maybe parts of Alaska or Canada, but this is not a daily driver. This is a powder ski in my mind. It does everything super well there. It's not something I would give to an intermediate skier. It's not something I would just pick off the rack and hand to anybody. This is a powder ski. If you wanna be able to run between the powder and the groomers, it does really well. It's not a grab it out of your car any day of the week. I can say that now. I have two pairs of skis. I have an Atomic Maverick 80 ATI and now the Salmon QST 106. On a day where it's like a bluebird and it hasn't snowed in a week, I'd want my Atomic Maverick 80 ATI. So just so you know, Salmon's advertising on it is a little bunk. What else? Downsides, I don't know. But Colors a little pale. <laughs> the bottom is really cool. This is the problem with this ski. This ski review was the first time I've ever felt really foolish because I have been struggling to find anything wrong with it. I skied it for the full day. I tried to push it to its limits and I just could not find them. The only limits on this ski were me. <laughs> I crashed one run and it was 100% my fault. I just like got so caught up in having fun. One of my tips kind of got crossed. This, you could blame the snow. The snow is a little sticky on the inside and fluffy on top, but it was really just me. It's user error. But you know what? That wasn't the ski's fault. Maybe it's my own shortcoming, but I could not find a single thing I didn't love about the ski. And you know, it's embarrassing too because that's kind of become my YouTube personality. I'm snarky. I like will really dig my fingers into things and find things wrong with the ski. I couldn't find anything here. I was just grinning ear to ear the whole time I was on the ski. Carving, if you're like looking for a really heavy crud cutter, like a Vocal M6 Mantra, K2 Mindbender, even some of those like peak skis, if that's what you're looking for for a bad condition day, this isn't that. That's not really a defect of the ski, just so you know how it's categorized. It's not a hard, heavy condition crud cutter. This is like a surfboard. I don't know, that's not a con of the ski, that's just. <laughs> I guess if you wanna like, you know, pick on me in the comments for not being able to challenge these skis more, I get it. And I love roasting skis for their problems and defects, but with the Solomon QST 106, I failed to find any real issues. I could read. Woo. All right, now let's talk about the good. These skis absolutely shred. These were the most fun I've ever had on powder. This is the best powder ski I've ever skied on in my life, hands down, no competition. I haven't had that much fun in powder since I snowboarded. This is the closest thing to what a snowboard feels like in the powder on skis. It was amazing. It's not magically gonna make me fly in the air. It's, you know, <laughs> you still have to be able to ski it. But I was not able to find this ski's limit off trail or in the powder. It hopped turn to turn beautifully. Edge to edge was no problem. Even in the trees and quick little things, areas where the Atomic Bent 100 struggled, this ski had no problem. This ski was an absolute joy to ski. I had no issues turning them, heavy snow or, or light snow because some of it was windblown and some of it got kind of heavy into the corners. No problem either way. I took it on the Super G Hill, made some nice easy carving turns. I could still get my hand on the ground. What an amazing, amazing ski. I, 
honestly tried so hard to find <laughs> something wrong with these skis that I like crashed and you know because I was just like oh well how far forward can I go how much can I load the downhill ski but these skis delivered in every single aspect of a powder day these skis are just they're just fun. They're super fun. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You watch people on Instagram, and I always like kind of roll my eyes, like, oh, okay, another pair of QSTs. We get it, Solomon. No, I think people just are skiing on these. <laughs> I mean, some of it might be Solomon's advertising, but I think these skis just rule. Um, they have a nice kind of like gradual rocker profile that really allows you to float on top of big powder. Uh, I had an awesome time with flotation. I only saw the tips go under the powder one time and that's when I was in something that was totally untouched. While I was skiing, one of the lift towers was actually struck by lightning. So like half of the mountain was closed down. So everyone was skiing in this little area and then about an hour later, they reopened the lift and it was all untouched powder. That was the only time I ever saw the powder go over the tips. <laughs> they, just, they, they float really well is what I'm trying to say. If you're somebody who likes carving, that good feeling of a good carved turn, you can get that in the powder. Somehow, it's like the same kind of flotatious feeling, you're not on the front of your boots as much, but you can just make a nice gradual turn even in the powder. And I gotta say, nothing feels better. I think a lot of what the ski does well is in the shape of the ski. I think a lot of like the way that the turn initiation starts, the way that it kind of comes up on those turns in the powder just feels really great. And I think a lot of that's from the shape. The best word to describe these is it feels like surfing on skis. I, I'm not sure what else to say. Cause it has good flotation, good turning, and every kind of turn just floats into the next one. They let me get away with things that I normally can't get away with, where when I get in that much powder, I need to lean back or I can't wash out my turn that way. These let you do it. These are really, really an amazing ski. They felt perfectly stable when I got them up to speed. I never got any of that kind of speed wobble you get from some of the lighter skis. Um, I was able to load the turn when I needed to, to carve kind of in the groomers. The turn initiation feels really good. You kind of have your bite in the turn at that second bulge in the ski. Sometimes I've talked a little bit when I was reviewing the head core series that I think that there's like a ski that gets designed and then the other ones kind of fall in line like they're an altered version of that ski. I think it's to keep development costs and research costs down when you're, when you're doing a ski design. For instance, the Atomic Bent 100, my theory on that ski is that the Atomic Bent 120 is the original and then the 100 is just kind of a slimmed down version because it doesn't really feel quite right in the dimensions. Similarly for the Headcore 99, it just feels like a stretched out Headcore 93 where they maybe put some filler in the middle and just widened it out. Shape feels a lot better, it makes a lot more sense. With these skis, these feel like the original. These feel like this is what the Salman QST line was kind of designed for. This feels like the best width of the Salman QST that I've skied. And I've only skied the QST 98 and the 106, but the 98 feels like a shrunken version of this. It just doesn't do everything quite as well as the 106 when it comes to off-trail performance, when it comes to flotation, when it comes to kind of just fun and surfiness. It, it still feels good. I gave the Salman QST 98 an 8.5 if I remember right. It still feels surfy and good, but the QST 106 feels like a better version of the QST 98. It gives you all the surfiness. It maybe gives you a little bit more patient turns when you do carving. But the fact that it can carve at all at 106 is amazing. It gives you a ton of spring when you're kind of going in between areas. I went through the steps, which is like powder and then cat track, powder, cat track. When I was kind of going off of those, I felt a ton of spring out of these skis. Every turn felt smooth and bouncy. I'm trying to kind of narrow in on what's good but it's a long list. The next thing I liked was the stability out of the turns and the tails. When I loaded it up the turn, it would still give me a strong platform in the back of the ski. The way that I ski, this was just like the perfect balance 
of turn shape when you're on firm snow and surfy flow in soft snow. For value, you can get these for 520 in the summer, 750 if you buy them new. The top, all they did was change the top sheet. I don't think they're gonna change these skis for a little while because they're so good. Consider buying these in the summer if you're really concerned about that. If you just need a powder ski, I think 750 is reasonable. I mean, I always think kind of winter pricing is high, but in the context of everything else, that's a pretty normal price. 520 is the least I found it for. I may have found some 480s at the end of the summer when there was weird sizing, but yeah, 520 to 480 is what you'll typically find it for on sale. Overall, I'd say the value is on par, if not a little bit cheaper than some of its competitors. I think the thing that's really hard with the ski industry is that the way we describe things makes it seem like one ski might be perfect for every climate, and these aren't. They're just the best ski for the best conditions. <laughs> if you're in Utah, you should be on a pair of QSTs or at least try them, okay? If you're in Idaho, you should try out the QSTs. If you're in Colorado, you should be trying out the QSTs. Everybody kind of in the best part of the US should be trying these out. These are not a kind of groomed run, do it everything ski, but for a powder ski, this is the best performance I've ever gotten out of a ski. But if I was someone from like Oregon and the weather was bad, I don't know if I'd wanna be on these skis. On a good powder day, they're gonna be awesome. If I was on the East Coast, I probably wouldn't be looking at these. Might look at a 92 if you like something in the trees. <sighs> they could be good, but the number of days they would be good would be pretty limited. So I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't have anything bad to say about these skis. <laughs> But I wanna be honest with you about the limitations. These aren't for everybody. So take that for what it's worth. I would like that Solomon didn't try to make these skis for absolutely every climate because then they wouldn't feel as good as they do. So I'm gonna be honest with you. Don't take these in really, really wet, heavy snow. Don't take them in icy conditions. Don't take them where the snow's had time to melt and refreeze. That's not what they're best at. They can get through it. Like I went through some weird snow and they still got through it okay. But don't go into it thinking, I can buy these anywhere I live. This is a ski for powder. And I know, I'm supposed to be the snarky guy. I'm supposed to be the one tearing this ski a new one. But I just, I, I just couldn't find anything to pick at. <laughs> I have more limitations than this ski does. You know what's funny? I told Zach to buy a pair of these when they were on sale. When I bought them, I was like, Zach, you gotta get on them. And he was just, he's always looking for the best deal. Oh, I think if I buy them from here, I can get them for under 500. I said, okay, Zach, now they're on sale. They're 440. No, they gotta be under 400. And he just watched this thing go by. Obviously, it's not a big deal to wait. He can get them this next summer. But Zach, if you're watching this, I gotta say, these skis are not just the real deal. These skis are the pinnacle of powder skiing. And I don't make any money. Solomon, they don't return my calls. I've reached out LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever. I know people who know people. I'll, I'll send a message. You think I've got any response? No. Solomon, they, apparently for some reason they want nothing to do with me and I'm still telling you the truth. When stuff is bad, I'll tell you, but this isn't bad. This is as good as it gets. Now for score, I am grading these as a powder ski. I am not grading them as an all mountain ski. A 106 is not an all mountain ski in my opinion. I know people will take issue with that and that's fine. You guys can deal with that in the comment section. But as strictly as a powder ski that I will take on groomers and I want to be able to carve and make turns. But primarily as a powder ski in a 106, this ski has zero flaws that I can find. They're a little bit ugly on the top sheet. <laughs> but I don't care about that at all. For a powder ski that you're gonna take in the woods, that you're gonna take a little bit in the groomers, I'm gonna regret doing this because I'm gonna get a lot of heat, <laughs> but I'm gonna give these a 10 out of 10. These were perfect. I could not find anything wrong with them, 
And not only that, this ski shape, in my opinion, has revolutionized how people will ski on powder. I'm not sure why they're not more popular than they are, but this is the best powder ski I've ever been on, the most fun I've ever had on snow. This is the best thing since snowboarding when it comes to powder, these skis are absolutely phenomenal. I don't say this lightly, I was tossing and turning all night in bed. <laughs> oh, there's gotta be something, right? Oh, <laughs> no. These skis are a 10 out of 10. I've never done this before. I don't plan on doing it again. This ski is absolutely perfect when it comes to powder. The powder skiing and the comfort in which you can carve and how much fun you're gonna have floating edge to edge. So for me, here at Rickety Ski Reviews, the 2023-2024 Salmon QST 106 gets my first ever perfect 10 out of 10. So anyway, that's the end of the video. If you like this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing. I did not take money from Salmon. I did not take money from anyone. I am just out here giving you my honest opinion about skis. More than anything, just thank you for watching. I really appreciate that you guys take the time to watch my videos, that you're so vocal in the comments section. Um, we have a member program where you can get these videos early. Typically, people will see the videos anywhere from like two days early to a few hours early, just depending on the schedule. You also, if you're a member, I will make size and recommendations for the most basic one. I will make ski recommendations for the second tier, and I will actually review your skiing, and you know, you'll send me a video of your skiing. I will give you critique and things that you can improve, and maybe even drills that you can do, and that is for the third tier. So if any of those interest you, being a part of our community really helps out the channel. But as always, just thank you for watching. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.